Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Promised Neverland manga review. This one's going to be for chapter 169, which is called Perfect Scores. And this was a pretty interesting chapter because it definitely increased the pacing and sort of took a surprising move, I suppose, in terms of just how quickly they got around to it with what they did with Isabella. The, the main reason I say that is because while I think everyone could predict that Isabella was going to turn at some point and she'd end up helping the kids, um, I think we were sort of led to believe it would be a little bit more of an arc to get here, that she'd be against the kids, against the kids, and then when it really came down to it, she'd turn and it'd be this amazing um, sacrifice. Instead, they chose to have that be the sort of cliffhanger like switch at the end here of like oh she's on their side already and it seems like everything's going against Peter Rattray and um, I'm not really sure exactly how strongly I feel about this because on one hand like cool like they're going for it on another that's potentially a little bit of a wasted plot arc it's a little bit of a wasted character arc they could have done something more with that. Um, I ultimately appreciate the sort of fast pacing, but it's fair to say that The Promised Neverland is sort of jumping around between being incredibly fast paced on certain things and then being incredibly like slow paced on others. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a weird chapter for me in terms of like, hmm, I still overall like where we are, where we're going what's still left to be resolved but I really don't have a clue about like how long is left in all of this it just feels like we're we're just along for the ride here uh, however many twists and turns they're gonna have of reverse counter reversal counter reversal oh I'll wait I'll reverse that uh, I can see that going on for a few more chapters but at the same time I could also see like the next chapter almost like setting up the ending if it is as like clear cut as we see so let's get into the chapter here and go through it sort of page by page and um, so we start off with this um this is a little confusing here because it's um it's this narration here if there were no farms our families and friends would not have been killed to be served as food if it wasn't for you that abhorrent hunting ground wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for your clan the world wouldn't be this way this world wouldn't be a place where we children are continually eaten by children and um, how many children have died because of you how many have shed tears and then we just cut back to Peter Rattray and his big speech about, you know, you wouldn't have been born, I'm your creator, your dad. And we cut back to the fact that, you know, Oliver is here. Uh, and we see that uh, in given more context here, he, he takes this to heart because Peter Rattray is trying to claim that he's his father. But Lucas, of course, was the one who was the closest to Oliver. And that's the character he sees as being his father. And... Peter Rattray is not Lucas and to make that comparison is is nothing in, in um, Oliver's mind so he's furious about that and um, I'm just a little confused about like was the character meant to have said that to Peter Rattray um, or is that meant to be a speech from Oliver it's just not clear if like anyone said that or if that's just Peter Rattray like um, assuming that like oh that's how they feel so I'm going to counter that with what I say um, just a little bit like you know could you please tell us what that was meant to be? So uh, Norman orders Peter Rattray on your knees. And this is where we get some kind of confirmation from previous um, stuff. Um, it's revealed that Vincent is alive. He was just shot in the shoulder. Um, so that's cool. We get confirmation here that uh, Hayato, as I predicted, kind of last week, did escape. Um, I noted that he was gone. But at the same time, the scene made it clear that there was only five of them. And then they specifically said all five of them have been captured and they didn't show Hayato so it was kind of like have they just not drawn him in the scene so that was a little bit weird maybe that's just a mistake or you know are they trying to purposefully lead us astray to try and you know create these twists either way uh, Hayato was di didn't get captured in that moment um, and we cut back to explain how Hayato is here and that Vin they're, they're talking about leaving the area once they were spotted and Vincent actually orders Hayato, can I rely on you to go and secure our escape route? 
and um, we have Nigel saying if we end up and uh, not catching up to you don't come back here go meet up with Oliver's group and um, and we see all the stuff happen and Hiato notices that like they've all been captured and stuff like that so this is the situation that they kind of had a feeling could happen Hiato we see him running through the corridor and he does end up taking out one of the um uh, the the kind of Rattery clan guards, pretty cool kick, especially for a, a relatively sort of cowardly character like Hayato. It's interesting to see him actually take action here and, um, you know, actually uh, kick someone. Uh, so he takes care of that. We see this is where Oliver takes out one of the guys, and um, yeah. So Hayato is met up here with Vincent again, and um, he's glad Vincent is still alive. Um, and he Vincent basically just says that like. I figured I wouldn't be killed immediately because then they wouldn't be able to do the Gupna ceremony and that like anyone they kill they realistically still want to use as food for demons so you know that was something he kind of bet took a bet on and um, so yeah this is when Don radios everyone else and you know Ray informs them that like okay we've taken control here you had me seriously worried Vincent is what Norman says in response to finding this out and yeah, it seems like Peter Rattray has been completely defeated here. He's on his own, on his knees, surrounded by all the kids, you know, holding guns at him. They have enough people here that they've got everything covered. And it's a big double page spread showing just how in control they are. And Norman says, you lose. So th th that's a pretty cool page. But so Peter Rattray starts laughing and just says, how stupid, what will you gain from killing me? Even if I lose, you still have no escape route, no chance of winning. Um, Jillian says, uh, no need to worry, thank you very much, we disabled the system again. Uh, Emma says, the only issue that remains is you, uh, no one can come and save you, uh, we will, and she trails off as uh, Peter Rattray interrupts her and says, no one can come and save me, all that's left is me, let's see, I think you kids are forgetting something. And then we see one of the moms arrive in, she's holding a gun, she's behind Ray, and it's revealed that all of the other moms, I guess, are here. They're pointing guns at all the kids. They've arrived in that, like, it's just this whole sequence of, like, uh, all the kids appeared behind Peter Rattray, took over. Now all the moms have appeared behind the kids, and they're in control. So this is the twist central, basically, back and forth here. They're all shocked by this. Oliver seals the gun pointed at Peter Rattray's head. Everyone is shocked about this. Like, how did they even get through? Uh, they thought they'd won and this is when we get the setup for Isabella Isabella arriving so she walks in and um, obviously she's the the grandma at this point she's head of I suppose all the moms and um, she walks in points the gun at Emma and says what is was it fun outside Emma you destroyed everything you fought and fought and fought and fought but no matter how much you resist it still ends up this way despair is unavoidable uh, you and everyone else returned you didn't learn your lesson and the result and this is the result so it, it's teasing this idea of oh like is it this is Isabella finally getting the advantage over the kids she is on Peter Rattray's side this is a, a kind of a, exactly what we expected but then turn the page all of you did splendidly perfect scores for everyone as Isabella joins uh, in pointing the gun at Peter Rattray and it seems like all the other moms uh, join in as well and um, so that's the reveal here is that Peter Rattray has had everyone basically turn on him and this is truly shocking to him he's really shocked by this the kids are shocked that Isabella is on their side as well and he Peter Rattray just says you betrayed me Isabella and that's where we end with Obviously, next chapter is going to be next week. So, yeah, the, the discussion here is definitely going to be about, like, okay, what exactly is the sort of motivation behind this? I think it's fairly obvious to a degree in that um, Peter Rattray here is trying to defend this system, keep this system in place. And he is basically betting on the idea that, like, he has the loyalty of Isabella and all of the moms because they control the demon society at this point but he's ignoring the whole idea of that all of the moms and grandmas are all cattle children they've just been cattle been cattle children who've been given an opportunity to have a life and not just be um given away to be eaten and i think that's what this is here this is everyone turning on that system 
even the ones who I suppose to a degree you could say almost like betrayed their own families and that, that that's one way of viewing the moms but it you also have to be somewhat sympathetic to it in that can you blame any of them for taking that opportunity to survive uh, and I don't think in most cases you really can so this is a notable moment but it feels almost like how does Peter Rattray reverse this like the, all of the cards are on the kids and the mom's side here so unless something absolutely crazy happens and like another demon character sort of comes in it feels like we're like kind of done here like unless this is just some like double triple twist type thing where like Isabella is tricking the kids by making it seem like she's on their sides but just when they're comfortable she'll reverse it and reveal she's actually still on Peter Rattray's side um and I know I don't know if they'll do that because I think ultimately even if they did that they'd want to then have her turn back but does that have as much meaning after you've done this already so it's it's definitely a little all over the place um but it's still you know exciting i still want to know you know the obvious stuff what is the promise when is the one going to come into things when are they going to activate the promise when are they going to mention the fact that there's a entrance in a way to the um, human world in gracefield house those type of things it feels like that's probably what needs to be brought up next that they're in complete control now and peter actually has even less people on his side now so we have to now go ahead with what the kids ultimate plan is which is it just to escape they've set up the fact that the end game is happening here at gracefield house so i don't think the plan is obviously just to like escape by fleeing from gracefield house something is happening here and it's just about like what is the next stage of this and i don't know what the the next kind of stage is really um but um yeah, it, it is interesting. I think I think it is a, a surprise to end this chapter with Peter Rattray like double down on how much he's um, in a bad situation uh, because I did think they would go back and forth for about three or four chapters of just constantly reversing the situation. So to have them actually like double down on just how bad it is uh, for for Peter Rattray is quite interesting actually. Um, Obviously, going into next week's chapter, the key thing is going to be, okay, Isabella, Isabella, talk. You know, we can sort of figure out why the moms would turn against um, Peter Rattray, but we need it to be said. Like, what exactly is the specifics of the motivation? How did Isabella get them all on side for this? Um, what, what are the exact words that were spoken about this whole thing? And, you know, where do we go from here? Have Isabella talk to the kids, especially, I think, Ray. And then there's also the opportunity, I suppose, here to actually reveal some of the other moms as being the actual mothers of some of the other kids. Um, so I don't know how heavy they want to really go into that necessarily, but that's always an option uh, for sure. So that that is something to sort of keep your eye out for in terms of like, I suppose mainly like who is like Norman and Emma's mother like just in terms of our main characters they, they'd be interesting characters to learn about but Isabella and Ray is I suppose the main one that we we do know about so uh, lots of options um, and I definitely did enjoy the chapter overall but um, it's definitely like you know crazy i suppose at the moment just what the pacing is like in terms of like oh yeah hayato who you thought was captured isn't actually captured and he helped free everyone and now um it looks like all the moms are you know back in to turn the tables but no they've actually switched sides and it's just pretty crazy but it's also good that it is really intense like that so yeah so yeah, that's my, my review for chapter 169. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this chapter, but that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.